Hey there, welcome to a brand new episode of Music Express. My name is Twan and for this week's vlog I sat down with Darren Tate in his studio to talk with him about his classic The Team which came out under the project name Jurgen Vries. Enjoy! UK based DJ, producer, composer and label owner Darren Tate is known for various different projects. Besides releasing music under his own name Darren Tate, he is also responsible for acts such as Angelic, Citizen Kane, DT8 Project, Orion and many others. In 2002 he started a new project which was called Jurgen Vries. The very first release was the track The Team and that one became a big success. But also follow up singles such as The Opera Song and Wilderness made it into the top 20 of the UK singles chart. For this week's vlog I sat down with Darren in his studio to talk with him about the Jurgen Vries song The Team. Since I'm Dutch myself I was very curious to hear why he picked a Dutch sounding artist name for this new project. There we go. <laughs> uh, right, first of all, I didn't pick the name, Sony did. They had someone called Michelle Post working for them and they had a guy called uh, Jurgen, wait, no sorry, it was um, Michelle Vre de Vries and Jurgen Post. So I had already given the record uh, to Judge Jules on vinyl and had it cut and he had not played it. And then Sony then signed the record and then gave it to him again and they put the name Jurgen Vries on it, right? And then he listened, and so Simon Patterson was working for them at the time, when you, he said, you've got to listen to the record. And then Jules was like, oh, actually, this is a really good record, and played it. And the first time he played it on air, he went, um, this is uh, by Jurgen Vries, but I have a funny suspicion it's by Darren Tate. So the mysticism of that literally lasted like about five seconds. Um, and so, and then when I went, so when I would go to, um, to DJ in Holland, um, Dutch would go, oh, so you, why have you become Dutch? And then he, I'd go to Germany and they'd go, well, why have you become German? So I literally, everyone, there was a, a widespread, and I, this was actually in newspapers. This English DJ becomes Dutch. <laughs> All because, because Sony unwillingly decided to change my name and stick this record out, but I hope that it would make it look a bit more like exotic. So that's it. Well, good PR. Well, yeah, I, it, to a degree. Chris Moyles, the famous Radio One DJ, um, I remember him taking the piss out of me once, going, "Why? What is with this guy? Why does he change his name?" So there's levels of it. Yeah. Uh, so in the beginning of September 2002, uh, the first track you did as Jurgen Vries came out. Uh, that one was called The Team. Uh, do you remember how you got inspired for this one? <laughs> I I had got a new studio, um, which was in a place called Hornsey. And literally, I had changed everything in my workflow. I had got a new mixing desk, new software, new computer. And I remember after finishing this thing, after a week, being so daunted, I just fell asleep on my couch. And then I got up and I thought, I better do something. So let's just do something crazy. And I sat there and I wrote the riff. Um, now, the sound of it is the similar to the sound the track I did previously on Sirius, which was called Citizen Game The Journey, um, which is an often long forgotten track that I did beforehand. So it's actually uses a similar sound. Um, so that was the basis for it. And then I just did the rest. Okay. So what else can you tell from the production process of the track? Well, I, um, it, yes, it, it used the Novation Nova for the lead. Um, it was in, it was it was kind of the idea of it. I actually started with the chords, which are very classic, standard, classical gas style chord structure, um, and then um, built around. So I knew these chords were going to be uplifting, and I knew I wanted the crazy riff. And so, using the equipment I had around me, which is against the romplers and the samplers and stuff, I built it from that basis. Um, but I wanted it to be different. I wanted the idea that the, the melody starts and then it goes somewhere else because a lot of tracks didn't do this. They just played one melody all the way through. So it was important that it developed. And so that was a concept I had from early on and wanted to see through. Yeah. So the track has a pretty epic bass line. Uh, can you tell us how you made that one? Oh my God, that's 20 years ago, right? How did I make the bass? I think I used... Um, uh, I'm pretty sure I used a combination of that Nova and um, uh, the uh, JV1080 uh, for the for the baseline. Yeah. So how long did it take you to finish this one? Huh, uh, probably about a week, I'd say. 
Uh, so was it easy to get it signed? No, it wasn't. In fact, it was rejected by nearly everyone. Uh, there was one. There was a label called Wonder Boy, which was and by a guy called Pete Lyons, I think his name was, and he was the only other person who was interested, but still turned it down. No one else wanted to sign the record. I remember saying I had management at the time. I went, "Why? Well, just nobody wanted to sign this record." And and this is something that I have had many times in my life with many great records. As well, I talked to you about, you know, you can you you can be remembered one second and forgotten the next. And when you keep delivering these records, people's memories seem to be short, even when the music's great and everything else. I've been doing this successfully for 20 years and I still sometimes can't get the message through to people. Hence the reason I have Wonder Records. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the team made it to the number 13 spots of the UK single charts. Uh, so did you expect it would be, be like a big one? I was didn't expect it to be that big. I mean, it helped that it was there was one weekend when everyone played it. I remember the Radio 1 weekend in Ibiza. Pete Tong played it, second record often to Narcotic Thrust, Safe From Harm. And then Dave Pierce played it, and then Judge Jewel, and literally everyone was playing it. I mean, Pete Tong played the thing. You know, it sounds crazy now, but that's how big that record became. So, and you don't really know how big something's going to become. You hope, you know, and then it just goes. And obviously, there's been, since then, it's just continued. You know, it's been there ever since. So, do you have any idea how many copies have been sold? God, I couldn't even begin to tell you. So did the team give your DJ career a big boost as well? Not particularly. <laughs> I don't think anything ever did. Um, I mean, I've, oh, that's not true. Obviously, these records helped. But actually, weirdly enough, this country um, weren't very positive about the Jurgen Freeze project. There were certain clubs who, and this especially happened after Charlotte Church, who I think had I done it, had I been Dutch and did it in Holland, they would have applauded it. But doing here it wasn't that cool. Um, and and I was de there was all this slight negativity around the fact that I was and the thing is all these other DJs had done commercialist projects and got away with it and for some unknown reason I was struggling with it mm. um, but that's life and hasn't never really stopped me but it, there was this, this odd prejudice about it because of its success and because of what Jurgen Fries became. So recently the team got a re-release with a new remix from Binary Finary which made it to the number one position in the Beatport charts. Uh, did they contact you or was this a decision from the label? They contacted me and I had done the mix and then I forwarded to Amara who, with whom I have a ongoing catalogue deal. Um, and so and they've been doing a series of re-releases of records of mine and, and I thought this sounded great, great remix. Put it in the pool. Uh -huh. So another track that came out earlier this year is your call up with uh, Daniel Candy on uh, all his live recordings. Uh, are there any other things that uh, are in the pipeline? So Daniel has done um, some other remixes uh, for me. Um, one was Falling, which people are aware of, which was a DTA project. And there is another one, another Jürgen Fries record that's potentially going to show uh, the light of day. Um, but he's a good guy and we're potentially going to collaborate on more records. We were, we were talking about doing a record on Mondo together, so we'll maybe looking at doing that sometime soon. And, and any other solo stuff? Oh, sorry, me or yeah, him? Yeah. In terms of me? Yeah. Uh, well, and, uh, well, as Darren Tate or just in general, solo stuff, um, yes, well, DC8 Project, uh, I've got an album basically that's really the follow-up to Perfect Wild that is uh, that is basically done. I've got a lot of releases lined up, and Juno Beats, um, Mondo, New State, who I've been releasing with, with Malmstrom, because I have a relationship with them. Um, and so lots, and then lots, some Darren, there's some Darren Tate collaborations also coming out, um, which will be at the end of the year. So watch out for those. And the album is it also this year, or uh, I'm not haven't decided yet. Okay. Uh, so besides producing, you're also active as a DJ. Uh, what is the weirdest or funniest thing that ever happened during a DJ gig? The weirdest or funniest thing. Uh, okay, I was playing in Tokyo. <laughs> So I did this record that I don't talk about very often called The Elephant, Are You Ready? Which I did as a, almost a joke. Um, when I, I went to this club with Amanda Arid and uh, this is um, Angelic. And um, and there was a club called The Elephant Club and I said after I'm gonna do a track with an elephant noise in. Anyway, so I did this track and it was huge in Japan. And I'd go there, honestly, I'd play the record and if I spun back the, the sound of the elephant, they would just scream, right? So I was playing this gig <laughs> <laughs> and there was a massive screen behind my head 
and and without me knowing it just said Darren Tate aka the elephant because they got it wrong so they just decided I was the elephant standing there with it. and I've got my friends laughing and I'm going oh, what are everyone's laughing about and there's like 10,000 people and me being called an elephant behind my neck behind the back of my neck so yeah so are, are there any pictures of that? Oh, I hope not. <laughs> okay, um, you're also active as the boss of Mondoro uh, Records. How do you combine producing, DJing and running a label? A bit difficulty, because I do all kinds, I do more than that. Um, uh, it's, it's hard work, but you love it and you find time for it. Um, and everything is balanced and priorities and that's pretty much how it works. So I have yeah. times for things and schedule. So what is the highlight of your career so far? Um, it's hard to pinpoint a single thing. I mean, obviously having a top five record in the UK was a big deal. Um, in terms of things you can single out. Um, I think that what I'm working on right now could end up being, in the, in the non dot side, could end up being a, quite a highlight in my career and probably doing a major Hollywood film. Well, thank you very much for your time and good luck with all your projects. Thank you. Alright, that was it, this week's vlog, my interview with Darren Tate about Jurgen Vries, the team. Darren, thank you very much for your time, much appreciated. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you did, make sure to give this video a like, leave a comment in the comment section below and make sure to subscribe. And I did another interview with Darren and in that interview we spoke about his classic Angelic, It's My Turn. That one should be online in a few weeks from now. Alright, once again, thanks for watching and until next time, bye bye.